I love to use the World Health Organization social determinants to frame, really frame our understanding of mental health um, of students of color. So social determinants, as they define it, are the conditions in which we live, learn, participate, socialize, grow. Um, and we know that these conditions are shaped by distribution of power and resources, representation, a sense of inclusion, um, and a sense of belongingness. Um, and in equities, in these conditions are responsible for the disparities that we see in health, including mental health. Um, so I want to parse out the structural determinants and interpersonal determinants that really fall under social determinants. Um, for example, structural determinants um, include structural racism. A large part of structural racism is it goes back to the lack of representation. Um, it's already been mentioned, but if students of color don't see themselves reflected on the walls they have to navigate in the curriculum, in the authors who wrote the materials they have to read for class, um, when they're physically on campus in the food that's in the cafeteria, if their identity and collective strength and resilience, as well as their historical trauma that they're bringing, if that's never acknowledged and recognized, um, and, and also if they finally muster up the courage to seek help, as we saw in the video, um, and to seek support, but they can't readily find the therapist who reflects fast of their identity, then all of this does lack, um, point to a lack of inclusion and poses a threat to the mental health of students of color. Um, when the conditions are such, um, a culture of stress goes up, imposter syndrome is felt more strongly, minority stress goes up, stereotype threat is felt at a greater level. All of this, again, leads to poor performance and poses a threat to the mental health of students of color. Um, you know, self-psychology says in order for us to thrive and fully participate in life at our full optimal selves, we need um, multiple things. For example, we need people to mirror our feelings. So if I'm hurting and if I'm being triggered because of what's happening in society, the racial unrest, maybe I've lost someone because of COVID and, and these hurts and feelings are not being reflected back to me in the circles that I dwell and live and grow, then that says I can't be at my optimal self. It also means that I need to feel a sense of likeness um, that when I enter a Zoom space, that there are people who reflect different facets of who I am and my identity in order for me to feel right that I belong and that I'm included in this situation. Um, of course, then that leads us to the interpersonal determinants. So things like implicit and unconscious bias, we all carry them. Um, we are all racist. Right? Even if we're people of color, um, we've been socialized to believe that whiteness and our proximity to it, right? the closer you are to whiteness, um, the better it is for you. And so we've all tried to live that out. And unless we really um, take the time to unpack that for ourselves, um, that becomes our default, default way of um, being. Of course, we know microaggressions, which has been described as a death by a thousand cuts. And so it may not be maybe blatant racism in some ways, um, but these microaggressions, the stereotypes stereotypes, um, as was mentioned, the tokenizing, um, all of these things, the burden of carrying an entire culture on your shoulders, all of these things, again, impact the mental health of students um, of color. And of course, social exclusion. We know the new discrimination in town um, is the absence of helping. And we saw that in the video. So people who are like us, people who remind us of our, our younger selves, for example, we might really go to the bat and go to the mattresses to support them. Whereas we might stay silent for other students who don't reflect um, who we are and who don't remind us of our younger selves. And that absence of helping is the new discrimination. So all of these things, again, pose a threat to the mental health of students of color.